there's nothing worse than getting stuck in the traffic. Cars beeping, you feel like you're wasting time, and you just want to go home. However, maths can help to make the traffic run more smoothly. But how? Today, I want Hanna to meet my friend Tessa. I'm a transport planner. Um, that means that I try and develop roads and make them be better designed. Right. Uh, have you ever struggled at any point when you were studying maths? Once you get to university, there's an area of maths that everyone will find difficult. Um, for instance, I found analysis very difficult. My friends found that easy, um, but it was just a matter of just getting through each week and it suddenly will come to you once you work on it and you work with your friends and you can all get there. Would you be able to give us an example of something that of you do? A problem I have here to each of these lines is a different road between these places. I have had the junctions counted on this network by a survey company and they've worked out who goes left and who goes right to each of the junctions. However, I didn't have a count of who goes from A to B or from A to C because this is very expensive and difficult to work out. So maybe you could have a go at working out from the junction count who goes from A to B. Okay, um, I don't think I'd really know where to start. It can, it can look really like scary at first, you've got lots of information, but if you think about it, we just sit and we'll be methodical about what we do know and what we don't know. So have a go on a piece of paper starting with just a grid. You can start off by putting the totals in. So if you look at each of the junctions and each of the junction counts, you can work out what the total is. Mm -hmm. So from A, there is only way, one junction that counts this is junction one, and we can count who goes left at the top, who goes straight ahead, and who goes right, and we add that all up. So 20 plus 40, 60 and we get 120 we get. then you can do that on each of them so if you do that for each of them we've got 30 30 and 50 then you can do the opposite direction so we know who goes to a there is only one junction that goes to a which is junction one and if we look at each of the turns that goes to the north part and we add those all up we get 60 and we fill in all of them and we get 60 60, 50. Then we also know that nobody goes back to where they start. So we can cross all of those out, A to A, B to B, C to C, and D to D. What you can also think about is some of these turns on here are what's called known movements. So from A to D, that is in junction one. There is only one turn that does that, is known. That is 20. Maybe you, Hannah, could think about some other known movements that you might think and go step by step, and you might be able to fill in the whole of the grid. Okay, let's give it a go. Now you have a go. The puzzle looks complicated, so don't worry if you do not get it immediately. We might need a couple of goes. Just keep trying and don't give up.